All right, with the NHL playoffs going on, we will be doing a personal project. My wife wants to uh, put the NHL logo on a sweater. So um, about 10-minute design, super simple, super easy. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and start with the outline, and then we are going to select satin. I normally like to keep it at about 3.5 millimeters, and then we're just going to go ahead and start tracing around the object. And for anyone new here, pretty much uh, when you're tracing around the object, if you click on the right mouse button, it will start to create a round node. So you can see me going around the corner, I was using the right mouse button, but if you need to do a straight node, you're gonna use the left click, which is kind of your primary click. So we're gonna keep coming around the object till we get to the very end. And then once you hit enter, it's gonna go ahead and close off that closed shape. All right, now we can look at our design. Uh, as you can see, I accidentally duplicated it, so I'm gonna delete it. And then if you hit O, or you just select an object, and then hit H, you can go ahead and start modifying some of these nodes. So you just gotta click on the node and hit spacebar, and then that will end up changing it from a straight node to a round node to help uh, preserve that shape. All right, next portion of the design, we're gonna do these diagonal lines going up uh, pretty much on top and below the NHL uh, name. So I'm going to click on digitizing blocks. Don't use it too much like some other um, hatch users, but pretty much you're going to create a diagonal line. So just four points since it's a straight line. And then let's just go ahead and adjust it. Or adjusting these, we want to make sure it goes pretty much halfway through the other satin stitch we're going to be creating. So we can always adjust it later. But after we create uh, and kind of modify that shape, we're gonna end up creating what's called a travel stitch. All right, the travel stitch, so you see my cursor, it'll just be a single uh, run that's gonna run from the end of that design all the way down to where I wanna start the next one. Travel stitches just pretty much prevent the machine from stopping because time is money in embroidery. Even though this is a personal project, uh, we still want to make sure the machine doesn't stop and cut and then start again. And to create that um, single run, again, digitize open shape, super easy. And then we're going to go back to digitizing blocks and do the exact, exact opposite way. Again, trying to make sure that it extends probably about halfway to where the satin stitch would end up. So after we finish digitizing blocks, get those two angles, we are going to create the inner satin stitch. That inner satin stitch, we are going to stick with the same parameters. It's going to be a 3.5. Eventually, I think I started with a 2.5 on this one, but again, going around using those same node concepts from earlier, and we're just gonna trace all the way around the object until it is finished. Now, as you can see, towards that bottom, that little V, that's gonna be a little difficult, but you can always just after. So you'll see here, saw that it wasn't at a 3.5. Uh, did it just slightly smaller, just cause it's on the inside. And then we're just gonna adjust these nodes, making sure everything's perfect. All right, for those diagonal portions, again, when I said I wanted to be about halfway, pretty much above the satin stitch or the halfway point, that's just uh, so that pull computation doesn't show a gap between both the satin stitches. So going around, making sure things are perfect. If we take the time now, then we hopefully won't have to try and stitch this twice. And that's all the ultimate goal in the situation. All right, jumping straight into the letters. Again, trying to make these tutorials quick, easy, uh, straight to the point. So you can do the letters a couple of different ways. I'm gonna break these up into different segments and just use uh, digitizing blocks to create these um, shapes all the way down. You could just try and use uh, normal stitching and someone probably wouldn't notice, but I feel like doing it this way uh, would be a little bit easier. So digitizing blocks, again, a little bit difficult. I messed up the sequence on here, but it's not a big deal. So you just select your object, hit H, and then you can just move the nodes like normal. Um, as you can see, my stitch angles were a little off. So again, H, you're gonna grab those orange nodes. Um, those show the stitch angles. So just grab those, uh, adjust them around accordingly, and you should be fine. All right, let's go ahead and create that third uh, object. It's just gonna go over, um, again, digitize blocks, super easy. 
uh, that's why I always use the transparency when I'm digitizing because I can see if there's any gaps that I kind of need to cover. So again, just like overlapping a little bit, you want to do the same thing with lettering. All right, let's jump in the sequence. Uh, like to pretty much have the middle one on the outside or the last because it just gives us a little bit more depth when we're doing it. All right, and then uh, pretty much hit H, that little red plus sign, that is where that object will stop its embroidery. So if we put it at that top right corner, we're gonna create our travel stitch to travel underneath that third object to pretty much, again, not have the machine stop. So let's select the other object, the second object essentially, making sure that start point um, was where that travel stitch ended. And as long as it's close enough, it's just gonna do a um, embroidery that doesn't stop. Now, when we start to do the H, again, when I said we don't want the embroidery to stop, uh, if you don't want to stop, you're gonna be able to see the stitches. So the H is just a little bit too far and I wanna start in the middle. So there will be a jump in that portion. So let's go ahead and uh, switch it up. Let's do a digitized close shape, try and use different uh, objects in the thing and go ahead and enter easy if you end up messing up just go ahead and hit um, the fill button and it's going to change it from outline to a fill and then just go ahead and adjust your object properties so again select satin and easy enough to so for this one i'm not using digitizing but for this one i'm not using digitizing blocks again just showing a little again just showing a little bit that you can pretty much uh, utilize multiple different things to do the same thing as always, kept it on outline like usual. So again, super easy to fix. Just go ahead and do that. Fix your angles and you're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So again, digitize close shapes. Click fill this time. So, you know, learn from your mistakes and then uh, hit those three, hit enter, and that should uh, fill up your uh, design. It's good to note, um, Doing these uh, small little touches will save time in the end, and also the start and stop points. Uh, if you get done working for an hour on a design, and pretty much you have a whole bunch of jumps and trims, it'll take a long time at the end to just kind of go around and fix all these trims. There are things, which I'll explain in another video, to help uh, minimize that. But um, just taking the time while you're digitizing smartly uh, will save some time in the end. All right, for the L, you can do it one of two ways. You can pretty much do one full object in that L, or you can do it in two different parts, either the straight down and then across. I chose to do it in one um, closed shape. So we're gonna go ahead and finish off this closed shape. And as long as you just adjust the angles, um, it should be fine. Uh, that diagonal portion is going to be the longest satin stitch there. <coughs> but that shouldn't be an issue because of how small the object is. So just gotta adjust, um, again, keep hitting H and adjust these angles. And uh, sometimes it'll give you error if they overlap, but just go ahead and add some more stitch angles. We're gonna add that a couple, um, just to make it look a lot better and tighten up those stitches. If you can also see in the between the H and the L, since those letters were close enough, um, it will it will not trim during that portion. So let's just go ahead and add all these angles to make it look uh, super, uh, super good. All right, let's just, uh, yep, move everything around, make sure it's nice and perfect um, before we pretty much wrap up this design. Got a couple more things to do. All right. Um, that looks pretty good. All right, next portion, uh, let's see how it stitches out. So we are going to hit the player, kind of see, um, move it along a little quicker. We get that zigzag portion to start. Uh, just doing the outside. And you can see those traveling stitches in effect. Um, again, that diagonal portion rolled straight into the inner satin, and then we will do the lettering and uh, pretty much about 5,000 stitches. That's pretty good for a less left chest logo. Um, and again, we're gonna be put on a sweater, should have enough uh, structure. Let's go ahead and change the colors uh, to be a little bit more traditional to the NHL logo. So we got that gray. Um, 
the final product, we did not use the gray. We ended up switching it to the older NHL logo uh, with the orange. Now, since this was going on a sweater, um, I just pretty much decided to add like that um, to Tommy inside. So all you really need to do is click the outside border and duplicate it and just change it to a fill uh, with Tatami. Now, as you can see, the Tatami doesn't really look that Tatami-like. Uh, that's because I had satin selected and it is uh, not doing a full satin. It's doing what's re uh, referred to as an auto split. So once we uh, again changed it to Tatami, it looked a lot more normal. So um, trying to get the angles uh, like I want, I did end up going with the diagonal version uh, because the NHL is going in the opposite direction. So decided to kind of stick with that. Go ahead and center your design so it doesn't show weird on the embroidery machine. And uh, again, let's go ahead and save it. All right, we went ahead and put it on the machine, threw in the Rakoma, and first time, first shot on the back. Uh, they just did a little bit of vinyl just to showcase some stadiums. That's about it. If you enjoyed this, uh, just uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe, and uh, I'll try and push out some more stuff.